This episode of Local Film Talk was recorded in the Green Room at Natty Green's in downtown Raleigh. Perfect for business meetings or just joining friends to watch the big game, the Green Room is the ideal place to host your next event. To learn more, contact David Crack at 919-232-2477 or email david at nattygreens.com. So when we were last talking, uh, you were working as the music editor for Lost, and you did that for two seasons. Right. During the second season, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things happened. It was, uh, um, it was a long commute, it was long weeks, and it was just a tiring schedule. Mm -hmm. um, my kids were junior high age, and I was you know, wondering if I should raise teenagers in Southern California. Um, okay. and the housing prices, the housing bubble, the, my, the house that I had bought three years earlier had almost doubled in value. Oh, wow. And I was like, I said, you know, sat myself down and said, self, maybe it's just time to go. So it's 2005, 2006? Yeah, 2005, 2006. And it turned out to be a good time well, to sell. Well, I did. I sold, I sold at a good time. I had enough, uh, I made enough money to move back to North Carolina and buy mm -hmm. a house. And um, I remember deciding it was time to leave, but wondering what I'd do in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my dad, and he had an insurance agency for many, many, many years. I mean, really back into the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, look, come back, work for me, get your license, get trained, and, um, and you know, we'll see what happens. So mm -hmm. I came back, got my insurance license, and I worked with him for a number of years. So, Actually, le so leaving the leave show and leaving LA was all you? It was all, they didn't it was a, decide to uh, change forces midstream. No, no. In fact, I trained my replacement, uh, a guy named Alex Levy. He's a fantastic editor, great guy. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I say I trained him. I don't know if I trained him. I, I just found him, and he was really good, and mm -hmm. he took over. Okay. No hard feelings. I told him, you know, early in the second season that that would be the it, that would be it for me. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like I surprised anybody, and there were no hard feelings. It was just okay, time to go. That's cool. So I loaded up, moved to North Carolina. I grew up in Greensboro, but I didn't really want to live in Greensboro. I, mm -hmm. and, and lots going on in Raleigh. Apex is a great little town. I, um, I have a friend that lives in Apex, and I moved to Apex. And for about five years, I, you know, the insurance business grew, and um, I started my own little uh, agency in Apex, and things were doing really good. And, and then, um, you know, all this turmoil with health insurance happened. And then over the right. last three years, it's just getting harder and harder and harder to be an insurance agent. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have a lot of customers that count on me, and I really like that. I like, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a service guy. Uh -huh. It's really not that different from being a music editor. Right. My job is to try and solve people's problems. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple years, with all the changes to healthcare, we don't need to get into it. <laughs> Seriously, but it's just not as fun as it was. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm really solving mm -hmm. problems for people. It's gotten so complicated. Well, it's, it's hard not to keep exactly up. a creative outlet. No, it's not. And then over the past three or four years, I've really, my, my kids are, you know, um, are grown now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, what do I really want to do? I started networking. I started going to networking events. I've met some more filmmakers and people around town here. Mm -hmm. uh, last fall, I took, a, uh, I took a documentary production class at Duke at the Center for Documentary Studies. Oh, really? I took a class there. I figured it was great networking, kind of get my juices going again, meet people, mm -hmm. to kind of see what's going on now. It was a great class. Uh, uh, I ran into you know, my cousin uh, and his story kind of landed in my lap. I'm like, all right, the stars are aligning. It's, it's kind of time to maybe put the insurance business on the back burner and not, um, I, I'm, I'll keep it going for a long time. It's still your day job. It's my day job, mm -hmm. but it, it's, kind of an, it's kind of an autopilot right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as, as of really last fall, mm -hmm. I've sort of um, started reinventing myself again back in the movie, television, right. documentary business. And I, I've been doing a lot of networking. Uh, my partner Pamela and I met uh, on a website Stage 32, which okay, is- yeah, I saw yeah, that one. You've seen it? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just, you know, you, people show up and they sign up and you see where they're from. And I noticed she was from Apex. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, cool, well, let's have a cup of coffee. So we sat down and had a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. and realized that we had a lot of the same kind of values and the same kind of work ethic. And she's, you know, she's prior military, so am I, uh -huh. and, uh, and I, started, I told her about the documentary that my cousin wanted to do, and she mm -hmm. was like, oh, we got to do this, we just got to do this, this is too important. Mm -hmm. It's funny when you start to um, 
start to do something like that. Mm -hmm. the, the synergy, if, if, if it's a good project, if, if it's, a, mm -hmm. if it's a, the real thing. And all the principals are passionate. People, people find you, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so when I met with Pamela, it's, well, it's a funny story. She, 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 I explained the project to her and she said, she said, well, how about I get some people together, some people I know in, the, in town that are mm -hmm. you know, the best people that I know around town and you can, you can tell them about your project. And I the thought, best people in Raleigh. The okay. best, well, the, be, the best people she knew, people uh -huh. she thought would have a similar kind of passion, similar kind of interest. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, there, there are lots of people in Raleigh. But the best well, people, and the, the best people in Raleigh are, are nothing to sneeze at. We got well, some no, no, it's a great, it's, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so she said, well, meet us at the Starbucks. And you, I thought it was, I thought it was like, yeah, we'll sit down, have a cup of coffee, and I'll kind of give them the spiel. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I show up, and there's a conference room at the Starbucks. And they're sitting in there and, it's, and, and they're all sitting around the table and I walk in and Pamela goes, hi, everybody, this is Mike. He's a producer of the documentary we're going to do. Mm -hmm. and I was like, <laughs> uh. It's like, uh, okay, we're on oh, step five already, okay. <laughs> no, well, I was like, okay. I laid, I laid out what we were going to do and what I, what I had in mind, what I wanted to try to do. And it was like, okay, here we go. You know, the, the trigger mm -hmm. has been pulled. And every, everybody, everybody was Everybody was on board. Everybody's excited they about it. They like the idea. I like the idea. Okay. I mean, it's not often you have a, a real viable project mm -hmm. kind of land in your lap. Right. So well, Pamela and I have formed a production company called Peakway Productions. Okay. And this will be our first official project. But, you know, we set up an LLC and we're, we're you know, we're just going to try to do, a, do it by the numbers. Uh, uh, we have a cinematographer, photographer, editor lined up, Chris Medico. Okay. Uh, he's a local guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a lot of good stuff, too. I've yeah, yeah. Real. I'm really fortunate to have great people around me. Um, mm -hmm. People found me. Yeah. You know? Well, that's interesting because you moved back here and it sounds like you took about five years about off five or years, so. yeah. And then you decided to gear back up. And, you know, I was wondering, based on what I saw in your, uh, you know, on the IMDb thing that, you know, you were music editor and, editor and everything, and now you're spearheading this documentary, did you, I, was it kind of hard not necessarily having directing experience and that kind of stuff, trying to figure out how to do it all? Did that class uh, there, at Duke help you figure that stuff out? Or? Well, it did. The, the, yeah, the class at Duke was good. But we, 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 we talked a lot about style, about modern documentary style. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd never, never really thought about documentary, really. I mean, watched a lot of them, but never mm -hmm. thought about it. So we, we watched a bunch of things and a bunch of different styles, talked about how documentaries have become more, more dramas, more... Uh, right not not scripted like a like mm -hmm. a theatrical thing but they're more stylized than they used to be and they look a lot a lot of them are more have a more found footage style than the talking heads so. right exactly but you're doing something um where you're actually looking back on an event from 1964. help me with, help me with math people 50 years ago 50, 50 years, years this ago. year yeah. same year the beatles run ed sullivan and i mean that 64 was a big year for a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, a lot of turmoil and uh it's just and there have been a lot of documentaries about various mm -hmm. things that happened in 64. Mm -hmm. It was a real pivotal year. And it's year. a big incident. It's the, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Right, right. Uh, specifically the USS Turner Joy's involvement because right. that's the ship that your cousin was on. Right, right. Exactly. And he was the one that came to you with this idea. He did, he did. Uh, you know, last summer we, 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 he told the whole story and mm -hmm. uh, pieces of it that I hadn't heard before or hadn't really thought about before. One mm -hmm. of the compelling things is Oh, well, there's a lot of interesting details, but one of the de really interesting details is he had a, they had been in Hong Kong and, and he had bought a, a reel to reel tape recorder mm -hmm. just because he was an, interested in audio and he worked in, you know, in the radar room and he thought it was cool to have a tape recorder. Oh, so he was in the radar room yeah, on yeah, the well, Turner Joy. Well, he, he okay. worked, he was a radarman and he worked in the com combat information center and he did a lot of radar, radio. You know, in, the, in there. Was he one of the guys watching the yeah, radar yeah. when all this yeah, happened? Yeah, he, uh -huh. he, uh, he sat down with his reel-to-reel -reel uh -huh. and recorded his re recollections of the incident. Uh -huh. okay. And 50 years ago, he put, he, he, you know, he threw that in a shoebox and it sat there. <laughs> so he had that all re-digitized and I have transcribed it and put it on a website. But that's oh, wow. one of the most compelling pieces of evidence we have is his first-hand account just a few days afterwards. Mm -hmm. The Turner Joy was the, the newest and actually the last destroyer built in that class, but the okay. newest, best radar, best technology available in 1964. Mm -hmm. The Turner Joy uh, was built in 59, so it was only a five-year-old destroyer. Mm -hmm. 